We're going to talk about beloved. What did you say? Beloved. Beloved? The beloved one. We're going to talk about the beloved one. Last time we talked about superstitious, superstition and religion. This time we're going to talk about the one beloved. When Saul was leading Israel, a fool was leading Israel. He hated David so much. And this is a very important part. That's why I'm stopping here and going into the deep. Otherwise, I'd just kind of smooth over this and go on up to the church age. When we get up here, we're so familiar with it, we're going to go much faster. But there's some things in the Old Testament that you just got to go look at. Saul was a, an arrogant man. He was a very vicious man. He was a very jealous man. And it says here in one place, remember I told you that in the last class that Saul offered sacrifice. The priests were only supposed to do that. Therefore I said, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not asked the favor of the Lord, so I forced myself to and offered burnt offerings. He forced himself. Superstitious. And Samuel said to Saul, You have acted foolishly, and you have not kept the command of the Lord your God, which commanded you for now. The Lord will have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart, the beloved one. David means beloved. And the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you to do. And so it says here, now there was no blacksmith that could be found in the land of Israel for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords for themselves and spears. For all Israel went down to the Philistines, each to sharpen his plowshare, his mattox, his axe, and his gold. And wherever they had to sharpen the edge of the goats, or the mattocks of the forks, or the axes, or fix the gold points. A goat, by the way, is a sharp stick that has a metal end on it that they poke the, the ox to make them go one way or the other. They poke them. And whenever they sharpened the edge of the goats, the mattocks or forks or whatever, so they came about on the day of the battle that neither sword nor spear was found in the hands of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. And they were found with Saul and his son Jonathan. Now, Jonathan was nothing like his father. Jonathan. It won that. In Greek, John in English again, or Jonathan. Jonathan and David were very good friends. A lot of times, people today, especially in the culture, the woke, gay, lesbian, queer, whatever they call themselves now. They try to make out that David and Jonathan were lovers. They were not. They loved each other. Sometimes the love between a man and a man, especially in the army, and Larry, you were in the army, and many of you out there that were in the army, your love for your fellow man goes even beyond maybe the love for your wife because you depend, your lives depend on each other. You have to be able to turn your back and know that you're covered. Brother Madden, there is sure what Madden, one of my most beloved teachers and friends and mentors, was in World War II. He was at Anzio Beach. He was in North Africa. I can't remember how many campaigns he was in. On my website, I write down he was a sergeant major. And uh, he had a guy, Moxie Gumbo was his name. Moxie Gumbo was a, uh, a Virginia 
bootlegger. And he killed people. And he even had a real hard personality, a vicious man, a fighter, and being in the war was really right down his alley. He liked to fight, and he liked to kill. Brother Madden uh, trusted him with his life. He said, Moxie Gumbo has always had my back, and I had his back. He said, I get so mad at him sometimes. He said, we were over there in the trenches, and, and he said he was out there, and, and I heard him laughing down there. And he was going out there, and he was shooting these Germans. He, a German had come out there, and he shoot him in the leg. And the next guy had come out there, and he shoot him in the leg. And he was shooting his old three Springfield, and he said he was a fantastic shot. He said he was, he was maiming these people, maiming them. And then the, the last one come out, they just shoot them all in the head and kill them all. One guy was coming up, they were going into Italy, and this German had a had been shot in the back and he was crawling with his, his uh, front forearm only. And he came up there and he said, I surrender, comrade, I surrender. Moxie Gumbo pulled out his 45 and shot him in the head and killed him. Brother Madden looked at him and said, you know something, Moxie Gumbo? He said, if I could spare ammunition, I ought to blow your brains out. He said, you're the most vicious thing I've ever seen. You hurt people just to be hurting them. You kill people just to be doing it. He said, there's a certain thing about humanity. He said, you're not human at all. Well, Brother Madden was around a lot of people that had PTS, especially when they were at Anzio Beach. Brother Madden went from 200-something pounds to 130-something pounds to Anzio. He was six foot six or so. And just like to starve to death. And they were under fire for months and months, you know. They were there forever. Anzio, you, you heard of Anzio, Larry. Anzio was bad. Audie Murphy was at Anzio. Anyway, Brother Madden uh, was there, and, and they were, the rations were hard to get. They were starving to death, under fire and starving to death, and they got some coffee. And Madden got out his little old stove, little old uh, canned heat stove, and he made some coffee. He said, Boxy Gumbo, he said, you, you want to drink it or wear it? Like that to him, they know they'd talk rough to each other. He said, Moxie Gumbo turned around him. He said his eyes were just glazed over, and he took his razor sharp bayonet and tried to cut his head off with it. He said, I looked into that man's eyes, and I loved that man. I had to pull my 45 out, stick under his chin, and pull the trigger. He said, I killed my best friend. He said, I didn't agree with him, but he said, he was my best friend. I had to kill my best friend. He said, I couldn't. He was so strong and so big, he said, it would have taken ten men to hold that man down. He said, some of us would have got killed. He said, I had to do what I had to do. That's a hard thing to do, to kill your best friend. When we were flying over Italy, we were in the plane together, and Brother Madden looked down there, and he said, there's where I had to kill old Moxie Gumbo. Like that, I saw, him go that. I saw tears coming down his eyes. Therefore, I had to kill Moxie Gumbo. We flew over Antium. Well, David and Jonathan loved each other. They loved each other. And Jonathan many times saved David from being killed by his father. His father just hated him in some ways. Jonathan was victorious because God was with him in so many ways. Jonathan said to the young man who was carrying his armor, Come and let us cross over the garrison at these uncircumcised, for half the Lord will work with us. For the Lord is not restrained to save by many, just by a few. The only thing that kept Saul in power and protected him so long was because he had a son that was better than him. Saul was a fool leading his men. In the uh, 14th chapter,
We have quite a story. So the Lord delivered Israel that day, and the battle spread beyond Beth Aban. Now the men of Israel were hard pressed on that day, for Saul had put the people under oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food before evening until I have avenged myself on my enemies. You have to have food for energy to fight, don't you? You have to have food. That's what was so bad about Anzio Beach. They didn't have any food to fight with. They didn't have any energy. Nobody could get anything in there. They were under fire for months and months and months. So none of the people tasted food. And all the people in the land entered the forest. And there was honey on the ground. And when the people entered the forest, behold, there was a flow of honey, that, no, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. They had God provided for them, but a fool was leading Israel. But Jonathan had not heard, and when his father put the people under oath, and therefore he put out his hand, the staff that was in his hand, and dipped it into the honeycomb, and put it to his mouth, and his eyes were bright, and he, he, he was rejuvenated. Then one of the people answered and said, Your father strictly put the people under oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food to gain. And the people were weary. And Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Jonathan was a greater leader than his father would have ever been because he was a man of common sense. We need that in this country today, don't we? We need somebody with common sense. See now how my eyes have brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. I'm rejuvenated. I was falling over. How much, how and much more only the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found, for now the slaughter among the Philistines has not been great. We didn't have enough energy to fight. An army, you got to have food, don't you, Larry? They provide food if they can do it. There's sometimes like Anzio Beach, sometimes over in Vietnam, in different places where men without, without food for days and they become weak. you got to have food to eat. And they struck among the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Aelon, and the people were very weary. And the people rushed greedily upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground and the people ate them with the blood in it. Now they weren't supposed to do that. Remember, that blood is sacred. Blood is sacred. That's where the life is. They ate. They were so hungry they ate with the blood in it. Because Saul had made them swear. A foolish man leading people. And they told Saul, Behold, they are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. And he said, you have acted treacherously. Roll a great stone to me today. And Saul, despise, disperse yourselves among the people and say to them, Each one of you bring me his ox and his sheep and slaughter and hear and eat and do not sin against the Lord by eating the blood. So all the people that night brought each one his ox with him and they slaughtered it there. And Saul built an altar and it was the first altar that he built to the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down the Philistines by night, and take spoil among them until morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. So the priest said, Let us draw near God here. Saul inquired of God, Shall I go down upon the Philistines? Will thou give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him, that day. And Saul drew near the chiefs of the people to investigate and see how this sin had happened today. For well, the Lord lives, who delivers Israel, though it is in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But not one of all the people answered him. His son had twice the brains he did, didn't he? Twice the good sense. 
Now he's going to kill his son. <clears throat> then said all Israel, you shall be on one side, and I and Jonathan, my son, and we'll be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, do whatever seems good to you. Saul said to the Lord, the God of Israel, give, give a perfect lot. And Jonathan and Saul were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son, and, the, and Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me, what have you done? So Jonathan told him and said, I have tasted a little honey with the end of my staff that was in my hand, and here I am, I must die. Saul said, may God do this to me and more also, for you shall surely die, Jonathan. And the people said to Saul, must Jonathan die? who has brought about this great deliverance in Israel. He's going to kill his son, and he's, a, he's the general that won the war. <laughs> stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. A fool leading Israel. Far from it. As the Lord lived, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day, and so the people rescued Jonathan from his own father. And he did not die. All of the foolishness of this man. Then Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you as king over Israel, over his people, and over Israel. And now therefore listen to the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he set himself against Israel him on the way and how he was coming up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and earthly restore all that he has. And do not spare him, but put to death both man and woman, child, infant, ox, sheep, camel, and donkeys. They were diseased. That was the reason why he said that. That's a, this, this is an extreme measure now. Extreme measure. Then Saul summoned the people and numbered in Teliam 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the valley. And Saul said to the Kenites, Go and depart, go down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you and with them. And he showed me kindness to all the sons of Israel when he came up from Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. So Saul defeated Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is the east of Egypt. And Saul said to the peoples, Spare Agag. What did God tell him? Saul will not do the will of God. He's going to do his own thing. Isn't he? The best of all the sheep, the oxen, and the fatlings of the lambs, and all that was good, were not willing to destroy them utterly, but everything despised and worthless, they were utterly destroyed. The end of Saul. I regret that I've made Saul king, God said. The Lord came to Samuel and said, I have regret that I've made Saul king. He has turned back from following me, and he has not carried out my commands. And Samuel was distressed and cried to the Lord all night. Remember, Samuel was a miraculous birth. His mother was barren, and this was a miracle. And he's God's prophet. God uses a lot of imperfect people, and Samuel was imperfect too. And Samuel rose up early in the morning to meet Saul, and it was told Saul Samuel, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument for himself, then turned and proceeded down to Gilgal. God gave him the victory, didn't he? But what did Saul do? He looked like he had done it himself, not God. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you, the Lord, I have carried out the command of the Lord. He's lying! Lying to the prophet of God. And Samuel said, 
what then is the bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear and Saul said they have been brought them from the Amalekites the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen and sacrificed to the Lord your God and the rest we have utterly destroyed and Samuel said to Saul wait let me tell you what the Lord said to me this very night he said to him speak Samuel said is it not true though you were little in your own eyes he was very very humble when he began you were made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed you king over Israel and the Lord sent you on a mission and said go and utterly destroy the sinners the Amalekites and fight against them until they are exterminated. These people were sinners and they were diseased. All of them. Now he's going to spread the disease to the people of God. You know, you have diseased animals. One time ago I had a I had a pig named Wilbur. Dakota named her. She was character, wasn't she, Marilyn? Wilbur ended up being about 10 foot long or so, weighed over a thousand pounds. And she got sick. And I called the veterinary out to see what was wrong with her and they blood tested and they said, you can never eat this pig. She's diseased. I said, I wasn't going to eat her anyway. They said, you can't eat her now. She's diseased. These animals were diseased people. I kept over until she died of a pretty much of a stroke in old age. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but rushed upon the spoil and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Then Saul said to Samuel, I did obey the voice of the Lord and went on the mission on which the Lord sent me, and I had brought back Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. He didn't tell him to bring him back, did he? Told him to kill him. But the people took some of the spoil of the sheep and the oxen, the choice of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord, the God of Gilgal. You don't take a cursed offering and sacrifice it to God. That's what happened there in the garden. Remember when Cain took the cursed ground, the cursed offering that made tried to make an offering to God and God wouldn't hear his offering, wouldn't receive it. Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of ram. For rebellion is a sin of divination, witchcraft, insubordination, is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, I have indeed transgressed to command of the Lord your words because I have feared the people and listened to their voice. Now therefore please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you for being king over Israel. Saul tried to hold on to that authority and kingship, like the politicians of today. Samuel turned to go, and Saul seized him by the edge of the road. By the edge of his robe, his clothes, his wrapper what it literally says in Hebrew. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from your, you today and has given it to your neighbor who is better than you are. <coughs> and also the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind. He is not a man that he should change his mind. Then he said, I have sinned. Please, please, please honor me now. What did he say? Honor me now. Even beyond honor now, too far. Beyond the point of no return. 
before the elders of my people for where is will go back with me that I may worship the Lord your God and Samuel went back following the Lord and Saul worshiped the Lord and Samuel said bring me Agag the king of the Amalekites Agag came to him cheerfully and Agag said surely the bitterness of death is past but Samuel said as your sword has made women childless so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. Samuel went to Ramah, but Saul went up by his house in Gilgal and Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day for Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made him king over Israel. Now the next chapter which we're going to do in the next message. God finds him a man. He finds him the least of men. You know, Saul was real humble when God called him, but now we're going to see a child called by God. The least of the sons of Jesse. The least of the sons. He was a nobody. Sometimes God chooses nobodies to bring about his will. Our Father, we thank you for this message also. Please use it for your honor and glory. Teach your people to follow you, to love you, and to obey. Father, please forgive me what I've done. Use your word wherever it goes throughout the world. 